This surely is old, old road here. Like it's, it's got the lane markings and everything, but they're just all worn out. Love it. So cool. On day two, riding the old Pacific Highway from Gold Coast to Sydney, the early start didn't go as planned. Day is that? Thursday. I thought it was Wednesday for a second. Day two of the trip back. Day six altogether. And yes, today is my birthday. What better way to be spending it than on the bike? What? No. How the fuck got a flat battery? What? <sighs> this is not how I want to start the day. And I don't think I'm even going to have enough power in it to clutch it. Don't even have enough power to run the... No. So this battery completely died. Overnight, somehow. Nothing was running. Ugh. 8.30. I never really worked out what went wrong. There was no sign of a ground or a short and the new battery has been working perfect ever since. At least I could have a birthday breakfast while I waited for the rep car to open and it was pretty bloody good actually. Let's go. Enough yamba time. Need to get on with it. So big shout out to mate at the uh, Repco there, I forgot to grab his name, but uh, you know, he helped, opened up a little bit early for me, which was really appreciated, got me back on the road. Rolling again, I was hoping to get to the other side of Port Macquarie today. Now, current route, I've got Nambucca heads, I would get there today, now ETA saying 12. That's obviously without any stops. I might aim for Nambucca Heads as a lunch stop and then see how we go from there. Spoto, a little behind schedule today, but still aiming to be at Lake Macquarie by Friday. So it's really hoping to leave nice and early and get punch out a bunch of Ks today. Not how I wanted to start my birthday. <laughs> Exactly. It's the cost. But it was nice. And it was a nice place. I'd like to go back there sometime without a dead battery. than it looks on the map. Big River Way is another renaming what used to be Pacific Highway. 
This place I remember stopping at, it's had various names across the years. I'm not sure if it still seems to be running. I think it was shut down for a period, but it seems to be back up again. There's the freeway there. Alright, Grafton, big stop. parked in the driveway It's even the width of the road. You know, when you're thinking about all those buses and trucks that are coming through here with that sort of size, you're just funneling so much volume of traffic through a place like this, little towns. It's just not plausible today. You know? But you know, back then we didn't have things like Amazon Prime and overnight delivery of anything anywhere. You had to wait for things and everything took longer because there was only so much you could transport. Fascinated by some of the trees out here. They, they must be so old, like they're just fascinating. Huge. And they're everywhere. Grafton. Fair way from the freeway now. Even this itself was a bypass because he didn't go right into Grafton. I remember this Macca's. We used to stop there and it was the first time I remember being sort of like, oh the facilities of Macca's is great. You know, on a road trip it's consistent, you know what you're gonna get and, and so on. And I guess, you know, when you have young kids, it, it really helps. But I must admit, as my kids are getting older and, you know, needs less assistance. I find now, travelling the freeway, it's nothing but Maccas and KFC and so on. And I'm actually kind of over that, to be honest. Must be, um, Variety Bash, maybe? Bima! I always wanted to do that. Alright, don't make another turn for almost 50 k's. Big long stretch. This was the thing about the old freeways. You got hot, caught behind someone, you just had to wait, you just had to be patient. The problem was some people weren't, and that's where we had accidents. It does make me wonder when you see the impatience that we have on the roads today and how that would play out on these roads. You know, would it be disastrous or would it actually teach people to be more patient? Perhaps in the past people were more patient because it was necessary. I recognise this one. However, I had it on my list because obviously I went past the sort of here but I was actually watching Dash, Ca <laughs> Dash Cams Australia and I saw this clip and I thought that's a wonderful looking town I wonder where that is that's this place normally you would go past this place but let's just have a look need a quick little break anyway caravan park Pretty much 
gin. Alright, so I've been running for a good couple of hours now. And just stop for a quick break. And if the alternator was the issue behind the battery, we're about to find out. Yeah, I think it was the battery had just had its day, died of natural causes. All right, Nimbucker Heads was my one stop strategy. So by rights, if I get to it halfway through the second day, if I'm doing three days, then we should be on track. Taking way longer than I expected, I have to admit. It's just amazing how much that's stopping and starting constantly. You know, speed limits up and down, up and down, 100, down to 50, back again. Oh mate, how do you push this there? Ah, I remember that. Again, renaming. That whole little section through there, just 60 k's an hour, absolutely nothing to see. If you happen to sit on the freeway for this bit, you didn't miss anything. Now we're going to jump on the other side of the freeway again, just crossing over. The old is running parallel to the new. Solitary Island Way. And this kind of runs pretty much all the way along to Port Macquarie, Coffs Harbour, Coffs Harbour. Always get those two mixed up. The old uh, the old road is just sort of constant intersections with the M1. So there's big takeaway so far is there's absolutely parts of the old road which are amazing and then there's parts that are just frustrating. You know, here for example we're just sitting on 80 k's an hour while they're sitting on 110 and it's, it's just a straight line. Nothing else to see, nothing else to do. But that was what it was. It was this. It was just a, you know, I would say this once upon a time was, you know, probably an overtaking lane. Looks like there's enough room for that. That was what you looked forward to, was overtaking lanes. So there, notes for road, comes to an end. So crossing back over. is repurposed for the uh, for the local traffic serves no purpose to us as travelers oh okay back on the freeway I guess getting close to Coffs. Now if I had more time I'd probably wouldn't mind scoping out all the roads around here. There's probably some amazing roads. You could probably spend a couple of days exploring around here. But as you can see they're starting, this is where the freeway is gonna start to bypass Gomsaba. Look at that, just look at the scale of that, it's in, insane. This is the one and only part left between Sydney and Brisbane where there's a set of traffic lights. A couple of years away, it was only just here a couple of months ago, the big banana. Stopped there a couple of times recently, so don't really feel the need to do it again. Well, since it filtered.
old mate there beside me is losing his mind. It's quite interesting to watch actually. There's some sort of weird belief that he gets just frustrated enough that the traffic will suddenly clear. Like that's the thing, you get to the next set of lights and you just roll up the side of me. rather than sort of the main bit to be honest <laughs> probably would have been easier maybe even faster oh well Sawtell so now I'm traveling through towns to kind of dot along the coast which as far as a path from Sydney to Brisbane probably predate you know what I described as the journey I took in the early 90s you know, I think by that stage they these towns might have been already bypassed but still at some point the roads would have gone through here or did the town pop up simply because the road was there in the first place it's just interesting how many of these little country coastal towns there are along the east coast Lots of retirement options. <laughs> oh. what a stunning little town. One thing I'm noticing is there is certainly some consistent ingredients that make up these you know little country towns and coastal towns particularly the coastal ones and, and even the difference between the ingredients of a uh, inland country town versus you know these coastal towns coastal towns number one caravan park <laughs> and not just one many lots of caravan parks two cafes three bolo club can't have a little country town without a bolo. Even the Aries, uh, yeah, there's not a huge amount of those. But bolos, plenty of those. Boat ramps. Stunning views. Crossing over the freeway once again. Heading towards Bonville. Pine Creek Way. I noticed that all these roads, like back up north, uh, the roads were much faster. You know, there's, there was a bunch of still road, you know, roads that were still 100 kilometres an hour, whereas these have all been reduced to 60, and this is the first 80 I've seen. It really slows it down. Every time someone makes a turn, it slows the traffic down. You know, that's that's where all the time goes. It's not, you know, one sort of major change. It's just uh, the removal of all those constant sort of, you know, those little incremental slowdowns as we slow back down to 60 again. This is actually getting frustrating. back down the 60 that little section of 80 lasted like seriously 30 seconds and we're back down to 60 again oh my god this is so frustrating 
if there's anything I've taken out of the last few hours, it's just an appreciation for the consistency of the freeway. I mean, of course, there is more slowdowns, like roundabouts like that, for example, wouldn't have been there previously. There's a freeway there. See parts of the, the old there, going off into the bush. The map thinks we can't get through Yurunga, but let's see. This surely is old, old road here. Like it's, it's got the lane markings and everything, but they're just all worn out. Love it, so cool. I just love the idea of like a, a lost road. I mean, look at this being sort of gone over and over so many times. Bypasses of bypasses of bypasses. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, it's funny how just little visuals, little things like shapes more than anything. Like just, there's just, yeah, just, you just get these visuals, you couldn't name it, you couldn't sort of say, where it is exactly if you saw it on a picture or anything but just you know, it's just enough to recognize something from your memory stop the fuel hey how are you uh, Sydney, heading back to Sydney. There's a couple of years. There must have been a big rally or something, wasn't it? Yeah, we did a big trip from um, Sydney to the Gold Coast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back way? What's that? The back way? Yeah, back way through all the dirt roads and yeah. yeah. So there's probably a few of us heading back the same way. Yeah, enjoy it, man. <laughs> yeah, you too. Buckerhead's just around the corner and it is 11.59. Heading to Nambucca Heads, I'm going to go through there. Now this is even leaving the old freeway to take a, a link road called Link Road.
place on Google Maps. Apparently down here. Stopped in here for a bit of lunch. Nambucca Heads Finest Instant Coffee and bacon and eggs that was missing the bacon and eggs that wouldn't be out of place in a Lego set. It was a refuel nonetheless and let's see how far we can get this afternoon. Okay, Nambucca Heads. I've ticked that off the list. Next stop, Kempsey, uh, via Maxwell. Spot a, a speed camera like every five minutes. Holden branding on it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Maxville done. Next. I'm actually jumping back on the freeway for a little bit. I'm so bored. <laughs> In August 1989, an Australian pilot's dispute heavily disrupted domestic flights, combined with a regular Sydney to Brisbane rail service being abolished. This resulted in a massive increase of coaches on the Pacific Highway. And then in October, the Grafton bus crash became the worst incident ever on Australian roads. It was a tragedy unparalleled on Australian roads. Just before dawn, the heavily laden semi collided head-on with the coach on a straight stretch just north of Grafton. Still, it only held that gruesome title until December of the same year when two buses collided near Kempsey. This is the sickening sight rescuers arrived to find on the Pacific Highway at 3.30 this morning. Two buses locked together in a head-on collision. Tonight the town of Kempsey is rallying around the survivors with offers of blood donations and accommodations for victims' relatives who left Sydney on a special charter flight this afternoon. The aftermath of those events set a monumental goal to make the entire route dual carriageway and today only Coffs Harbour remains to be bypassed and is currently in progress. I stopped at the two memorials to pay respect to the 56 people who lost their lives and were the catalyst of change to make our roads safer. Only took about 30 years to complete. But, yeah, if there's anything I got from this trip, appreciation that uh, we can now travel from Sydney to Brisbane, Gold Coast, with reasonable ease, safely, as safe as it can be. Check out Sharaf's video on his civil engineering building beautiful channel where he covers this off in much greater detail. God, there are so many yellow cars out this way. Some kind of 
joke, yeah? So many yellow cars. So many. Why? Around 2pm I was approaching Port Macquarie and after six hours of riding I was ready to call it a day. Chatting my wife on the phone, she quickly found some accommodation for the night. I'll tell you what, like, you know, as much as it's been sort of fun, um, not sort of having a plan, I don't think I like it. <laughs> yeah, it gets towards the afternoon, that unknown just starts like, oh, I really prefer to know. And I prefer to have something and aim for it. You know, know the sort of, oh, I need to get here by that time. It's not far from the um, ice cream shop. <laughs> Alrighty, see ya, bye. I spent the afternoon watching the sunset with a JD and Coke and then wandering back to the hotel, grabbing a bottle of wine and chicken fried rice takeaway to a wonderful surprise of a movie marathon with my favourite director. What started out with a wobbly start ended up with my kind of perfection. The next day, it's a nice casual 300 kilometres from Port to Lake Macquarie via Newcastle. And it should go on without a problem. Alright, so I've made a bit of a boo-boo. The drone is up there.